The ceiling installation has moved along pretty well, but I need to make up some more material. I've run out of tongue and groove. This is my material stack. I'm actually getting into some better lumber because it's flatter. The weight of the boards on top that's now on the ceiling has taken a lot of the cupping and twisting out of this material that's left below. I still have some crook in this material. That's when the boards twist this way or that way. A string along the edge of this board shows that the ends have crooked to the right about 7 sixteenths of an inch. Typical of these 14 foot 1 by 12s. Next I'll show you the bench that I'm using to straighten and route the material. This is the temporary bench that I'm using to straighten lumber on this cabin project. It's just an LVL beam laying on, on a couple of sawhorses. And I, this, this is the LVL, and then I screwed a uh, 1x12 board onto the bench. I pulled a string up lengthwise across the bench and then installed the 1x12 along the string, keeping this edge straight. So I can just set material on the bench up against the straight edge. I can instantly see if it's got any uh, curvature and then I can cut it straight. The straight edge that I used to guide the circular saw and router was made from a scrap piece of OSB that I got from the manufacturer of the SIP panels for my roof. I uploaded another video of that project. The width of the straight edge eliminates ruler work to cut the second edge of each 1x12. I glued a strip of angled aluminum along the OSB to provide a low friction surface. I'm making a quick update to my milling bench before I start truing 1x12s. The fence needs to be raised a little so I'm adding this stick. So I stretched a string across uh, the workbench in front of my new fence and I'm going to adjust the string now. I've got on my magnifiers and got my good light. So I'll, I set a block in here and notice how I can adjust it with this stick. I can move the string in and out. And I'm going to set it so that it's just touching that block. But if I set the block down and the string moves, it's too tight. So I'm going to pull it out a little bit. That's about right. It looks like it's touching, but it's not moving the string when I put the block down. So I'll go to the other end and do the same thing. Take my light with me. Too much gap there so I'll use my adjusting block here slide it see how I can slide the string hope you can see that I can slide the string in and out and I'm gonna put it right there try the bump test that that's close it's gone down it's not moving the string okay so already I see a bad spot right here. I'll need to uh, adjust this. There's too much, too much gap right there. I didn't realize it was that far off. So what I'll do is loosen this screw and put a shim back here, probably just part of a cereal box or something. Checking in a few places. That's, let me get my portable light stand here. Uh, 
That's pretty good. I wouldn't argue with that. Ooh, I got lucky, I guess. Well, this piece of wood behind the new fence was already pretty straight. So I'll loosen this screw down here on the end where I need to stick in some shims. Let's see, reverse, push this way. And you can see that I've got some good shim stock here. Yeah, granola bar boxes, those work good. Granola bars, oh, and, and Diet Right boxes make great shims too. Try this. That is it. If I put it in sloppy, I bump, bump the string, but if I keep it, the block straight up and down, it clears it. So it looks like it was uh, one, two granolas and one uh, Diet Right shim that made the difference. We'll tighten it up here and check. That is it. Yeah, okay. So now I've got a straight fence on my cutting bench. Good to go. Since my block is the same width as my skill saw fence, I can just use it to set up my cut. I'm going to adjust my straight edge here by my block. And I want to just make contact with the edge of this entire board. Don't have to take off too much. Just want to clean up the edge. So that'll do it there. I'll go down to the other end and that'll do it there. And then I'll just check all the way down. You can see that I'll have a little bit of waste all the way here. Here it gets real close, but that's all right. I don't want to take off any more than I need to. And I set these clamps just so that my straight edge won't flex in as I run my skill saw against it. After cutting one side of the board, the second cut is easy to set up. Put the board up against the fence, put the straight edge up against the fence, and I'm ready to clamp. This works because I chose the width of my straight edge. The width of the straight edge plus the width of the material left by my saw, th this width, these two together are the finished width of all of my material. So if you've noticed, I haven't used a tape measure to cut either side of my board. The process is purposely designed to be able to go through the material quickly. I have a lot of repetitive cuts, and that, so I don't want to 
spend a lot of time fooling around with the tape measure. As I dig down into my material stack, I'm thrilled with how flat these boards are. They've got some crook on them that I'm taking care of, but they're flat. They're beautiful. And that's because of the way they were stored. This uh, sticker ventilation method works. Right after I got the roof in place, I bought this material at an auction and it had been unbundled. It's a couple bunks that had been opened up and they weren't this flat. I got them cheap because they were crooked. And I stacked them properly and they're in darn good shape now. This board's pretty straight. Look at this beautiful board. My, oh my, that's gorgeous. I should just frame this board and hang it on the wall. Wow. You walk around any old carpenter's place and you'll probably see these things. They're uh, a sure sign of somebody that likes woodworking. If you take a look under the skirt, see what's going on. I like to start my wood stacks with something that gets the wood up off the ground because the ground is a compost factory and I, I don't want to compost my lumber. I usually start by putting down something like a railroad tie. I'm not sure where I got these timbers. And I'll put the two end pieces down first and then stretch a string across the top of them. Then I have the plane that I want to get to. And then I'll bring the, the middle timbers up to that string with shims. That way I've got a level plane, or a flat plane. Actually, it doesn't have to be real level. In fact, if it's not real level, it'll probably drain water better. And then the stickers uh, stacked on top of each other. It's important that you do that. If you have a sticker out here, the weight on top is going to put a bow in your board. So stickers like this. I've got one that's a little bit out of place here. That's probably in a hurry to unload the trailer. And uh, that's how a lot of old boys season lumber. This piece has some beautiful bluing in it. I like the way the, the uh, gray goes up to the burnt orange knots here. I think that's just beautiful. This is my uh, favorite artwork. I think it's probably from my sapien jeans. I want to live in a cozy cabin surrounded with this knotty pine. Just love it. I think I need about 25 pieces to finish my this side of the roof or the ceiling. 
got uh, two, four, ten. So another one and a half of these stacks, and I'll be ready to start routing. I think this is the last piece I'll need to finish up this half of my ceiling. So now I can uh, clean up my mess and I'll change my spacers over for the uh, router, the, the routing process. It's basically the same thing as the skill saw process and setting up straight edges and running the router down the board on both sides. And Got myself some brand spanking new bits. These are uh, too dull to, to cut with anymore. I need to take them back to town and see if a fella can sharpen them up for me. These new bits feel nice and sharp. You know how you brush your thumb against a knife to see if it's sticky? And you can tell if it's got a good sharp edge on it. Well, I do the same thing on my router bits and they feel good. These feel like a butter knife. Just don't stick to my skin at all. <sighs> I slide these down all the way and then lift them up a little bit and then tighten. I don't like to push them down all the way and tighten because invariably they stick and the way to get them out is to give them a little tap. That breaks the part that's stuck and then you can slide them out. I want this to be nice and snug but don't have to get carried away. The depth on this router is adjusted. The depth of cut is adjusted by rotating the fence around. So what I'll do is uh, put a, a uh, piece of scrap that I've already used, that I've already cut, put it in there. It hits there. It's hitting the top of the bit here when I slide it up and the bottom of the bit there. So I'll put it about in the middle and give it a test cut. With the router, instead of fussing around with a tape measure or a ruler, I just do test cuts until I get it to where I want it to be. When I use a, a router, I wear earplugs, ear muffs, a uh, dust mask, and eye protection. And I don't know how I'm going to put this uh, head-mounted camera on with all that stuff. So I'll work on that, and uh, I'll just have to do some test cutting with the router offline here. Okay, so first cut looks like my blade was too far down. This 
this piece is obviously fatter than this this edge here so I need to raise my bit just a little bit when I move the router fence around I like to put reference marks you can see where I've already done it some Let's clean those off a little just so that I'm not uh, all over the map so that's where I am now and I need to let's see I need to raise the fence just a little bit I think that's right let me look yeah so I'll loosen it keep an eye on my mark I'll loosen the hold and move it to say here and do a cut and I may want to put a reference mark there we'll see okay my second cut looks better that's that's about in the middle of the board this looks like about the same width as this so I think I'll start with that depth but I'm gonna put a mark on my I put a mark right here so I know where I'm at. Get rid of the old one. Okay, this is ground zero right here. So it looks like uh, the shoulder of this cut goes in maybe a 32nd of an inch. And with these nice straight boards, I don't need that much. I want to just touch this outside edge. So I'm going to move the fence out that way just a little bit, maybe a 64th of an inch. And, uh, Try it again. This is how I can tell how much I move my fence. Just put a couple pencil, mark, pencil marks down. I don't need a tape measure. I'll just move it until I see a little less of that lead. There. There. Clamp it. And then I'll, I'll do another test cut in here where I haven't mangled the wood yet. And you should be getting the idea that what I'm doing is finding this setback. And then when I have what I want, I'm just going to cut some little uh, sticks to put back here so I can just push my straight edge up against the fence. And I'll, I'll have the setback that I need for my router. I won't have to uh, do any measurements or fussing around. I'll just slide everything up to the fence, clamp it down, and route. That's about right. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of an indent right there. I, I feel it better than I see it. You can see it, it, it rises up right here and rises up right here on both sides. So this is my setback.
Okay, so I used the tape measure to measure the uh, target setback on that sacrificial piece that I had up here. And I've benched a board that's the finished width that I'm going to use. And I, I measured that it was 3 and 3 sixteenths plus a little bit. And I set my fence up here and uh, where I want it. This, this is where I'll make my cut. I measured it at both ends and clamped in the middle. And so that I don't have to do this measuring every time, I'm going to cut a block the uh, width of this opening. That's a three quarter inch block, so it feels like about seven eighths of an inch. Yeah. So I'm going to cut a uh, seven eighths of an inch strip of wood and I'll set them in here and then I can uh, just slide my straight edge to them, clamp down and I'll be ready for my cut. And, and the purpose of doing this business is so that I don't have to measure anything for all these repetitive setups that I'm going to do. Okay, we'll see how that little shim works out. Not so good. Looks like my router won't cut deep enough. No. So I need to move the I need to narrow this. Uh, not quite a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. I want a, I want three and three sixteenths plus a little bit, and I've got three and two sixteenths plus a little bit. Light's not good here. Apologize for that. Same thing. So I'm gonna. Uh, I left my table saw where it was. So I'm gonna mark my the position on the fence. Slide it over a little bit and cut it again. As I route the first edge of my straightened lumber, I just restack the boards here. And I'll walk you through the my setup for the first router cut. Kind of a no-brainer once the bench is set up for it. Put the board up against the fence, put the straight edge down, and this is the spacer that you saw me create. The spacer puts me out away from the, where it sets my uh, router guide in the right place for, for routing this edge. my safety gear out of the way. I always 
try to snug things up that direction before I set the clamp. I know this uh, fence that you saw me install is straight, so I want everything against it. So I'm, I'm ready to run the router down the side of the board. When I route, I go from this end to that end rather than the opposite way because it's uh, safer. When, uh, if I go right to left, it's actually easier because the router's trying to climb to the left, but it can get away from you and damage your work and damage the operator. So I do what I call uh, push cutting and that's, I'm actually pushing the router uh, in the direction it doesn't want to go, but it's much more controllable that way. And I'll, this time I'll see if I can get the camera on my head and all of my uh, personal protection, muffs, earmuffs, earplugs, eye goggles, uh, dust mask, and the camera. Uh, I just want to uh, show how much slower the routing process is than the uh, skill saw process that I use to straighten up the edges. You should be able to see, oh, just a second. You should be able to see that I'm getting a, a nice cut. It looks centered better than it did. And I'm getting an acceptable amount of tear out here with my push cut. That's, that's not bad. I'm making one pass for the full cut and it's working out fine. So I'll just keep going with this route. If I was having trouble getting it done in one pass, I could move my fence out with some sticks. I could loosen my clamps and drop some sticks behind my straight edge and make the cut in uh, two passes instead of one. That's one more out of 25 that I'm doing this round. And it, it just goes to follow that after I've done, after I've cut one side of all of the boards with one router bit, the groove bit for tongue and groove, I'll change over to the tongue bit for tongue and groove. Oops, I did that wrong. It's like this. I can't talk and work at the same time. I 
I can't even daydream and work at the same time. That's when I make mistakes. The depth on the last board of the cut looked a little low. So I looked at my router and looky what I see. Remember that pencil mark I put right here? It used to be above this crack in the base housing. It's moved. So I'm going to put it back where it was. Got to be a moral to that story. It's probably to think about what I'm doing when I tighten this nut bolt whatever it is on the housing. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so I've got a pile of uh, grooved lumber. I have 25 boards that just have the groove cut on one side. So it's not tongue and groove yet. It's just grooved. So now I need to cut this guy, the tongue, into this side of the boards. And I'll go over to the workbench and swap bits in the router. The bits come as a match set, the tongue and the groove cutters. And uh, I'm real pleased with these new bits. Uh, so I'll, I'll start that uh, process now. So I loose, loosen my wing nut. Everybody's probably got their own technique for swapping out blades. So I like to go all the way down, lift up a little bit, and then tighten it. That way I can tap the blade down a little bit to break it loose when I'm trying to get it out. To adjust the depth, again, I like using a, something quick and easy. That feels pretty, whoops, let's get a little bit looser. That feels pretty good right there. So that will be my, my first test cut depth. I just moved it. Check that again. Yeah, it's still pretty good. I don't get carried away with micrometers and steel rulers and all that nonsense. Now I'm using the same uh, sacrificial board that I used earlier. Okay, you can see that my setback's pretty wild, but I'm not worried about that yet. And hey, that's pretty darn close. What I want is for this edge or shoulder to be the same as that. Actually, I think this one's a little bit prouder, a little bit broader than this one. So I'm going to raise the blade just a little bit, hardly enough to see. Unplug this bad boy again. Okay, so I'll make a quick reference here. You can see where I was last time, or at least I can. I don't know if you can. So here's my temporary reference. I'm going to loosen it. And I always forget, did I want to raise? Yeah, I wanted to raise the bit a little bit in relationship to the fence. So I'll turn the fence towards the blade just a little. Didn't need to be much. Ah, moved it, but I had my 
reference point, so I'm going to put it... Before I was so careless, I had put a ref reference point right here. Hope you can see that. And I lost it. Or, I mean, I moved the fence. But since I had my pencil mark, I was... Okay. I'll try it right there. So I just moved it maybe an eighth of an inch from there to there. Yeah, that's it. This and this are just about as close as, as they're going to get. And I'm always monitoring this as I'm cutting my stock. You know, I'm checking it. In fact, when I was doing the grooves, I checked it, and my uh, fence had slipped on my router. In fact. I'm going to tighten that right now while I'm thinking about it so it doesn't happen again. Okay, and then important part is to get my reference mark there where I want it. I want to know where I started. There. I saved my reference setback from the first router cut and it was three and three sixteenths of an inch strong. So I'm gonna, oh, I can see my pencil mark from that setback. So I'm gonna start there and uh, give it a test cut and see how it looks. So I used the table saw to cut another spacer stick just a little bit skinnier than the one I'd been using before this was seven eighths of an inch and this is just a little less than seven eighths and I'm not sure why but uh, my router cut is a little uh, further that way than it needs to be I don't know if you can see that where my finger is it goes in almost a sixteenth of an inch and I don't need to take that much material out uh, I, I could run with it this way but you know I've got 25 of these boards and I like to set it up so I'm doing everything I can to make it easy on my router and myself so I'm gonna take this new spacer out and put in my old one and see where that puts me. And that's just what I wanted. So I, I went ahead and put back in my original 7 eighths of an inch spacer and it's given me just what I want. I hope you can see it but the uh, my first router cut one to here and there's a shoulder that I can feel and the next router went to here and it's a much smaller shoulder and like I say I don't want to take out any more than I have to so I'm just going to go with that first spacer it makes sense when you think about these router bits being a matched set and I'm going to just assume that my test cut for setting this up was off a little bit and I went on that goose chase making a little bit skinnier spacer and I didn't need to. So this spacer and this uh, 
straight edge is all I need for my two router cuts. So that's the setback I want for my tongue cut. That was easy. Just using the same router setback for both sides. So I've got my first tongue and groove board here. Tongue on this side, groove on that side. I'm rolling. Now I have uh, one more step that I do from here. I don't get carried away. But I, I just take a hand plane and run it down the shoulder of both edges. In fact, I usually do top and bottom. It's not necessary to do the side that's against the wall because you can't see it. But uh, I don't know which side I'm going to use at this point. So I just knock the shoulders off both sides and I flip the board over do the same thing on the other side. Uh, you can buy router bits that do that for you, but I think, I don't like the uh, profile. They take off too much for that shoulder. I just like to take off a little bit. The reason that I do this is so that if the wood shrinks, which often happens, there isn't a gap defined by a sharp machined 90 degree edge to draw attention to itself. So uh, that's my whole process. Oh, well, I'll go through and uh, I'll slide the board out here, lay down a square and square up the ends. Uh, and that's my whole process. I'm uh, probably going to do less camera work now because I'm running low on uh, groceries and dog food. And I need to think about getting into town to restock. So I'm probably going to just keep my nose to the grindstone here so that I, I'd like to get the uh, other side of my... Uh, stack taken care of. I'd like to get the tongues cut in the boards that I've uh, been preparing for, for my ceiling work. It's getting cold enough up here on the mountain that I'm concerned about staining the boards when it's this chilly. Uh, I usually take them outside and uh, put the oil on them, but it's uh, it's still in the 30s outside, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Um, I'll probably uh, be back up to the cabin shortly, but I've got a lot of other things that need to be done. For one, I, I've got some light fixtures hanging from the SIP panel ceiling, but I haven't got around to uh, hooking up the wires down below, so I may just take a little time and maybe a day and do some wiring and uh, get set up better in here so I can see what I'm doing. So th this will probably conclude my uh, section on how I make tongue and groove boards. I'm not an expert on anything. Uh, I do things that probably uh, I shouldn't from a safety perspective. So you shouldn't use the same techniques that I use. Uh, you should always go with your own common sense and what the uh, tool manufacturers say. If you do what I do, you might get hurt. Simple as that. Uh, so thanks for uh, watching through this video with me and uh, I'll catch you later.